Once upon a time, the Kingdom of Poland was the most tolerant nation upon the European continent. When Poland-Lithuanian Commonwealth reached its apogee, its nickname in the Jewish communities all over Europe was Paradisus Lodeorum, meaning the paradise for the Jews. Many destitute, persecuted, and ambitious Sephardic Jews moved to Poland from Iberian Peninsula in hope of finding a secure shelter. At the time when Poland lost its independent sovereignty and became part of the Russian Empire, Poland was the home of the largest Jewish community in the world. Before the outbreak of the Second World War, the Jews owned the majorities of the retail business. Fifty-six percent of all medical doctors were well-educated Jews. Today is my lucky day. I'm going to play duet with the famous Otto Rubinstein. Nobody could really interpret the beautiful and melancholic pieces of Chopin the way he could. And every piece he played, he could just enchant every small score on the paper into something magical, something totally nebulous and at the same time very personal and he was born in this beautiful place and he has this Jewish heritage and from a very young age he was extremely interested in music in piano playing. Antisemitism increased fast during the interwar period as a growing Jewish population lived a separate life and used Yiddish or Hebrew as their daily language rather than Polish. Before the Second World War, 31% of the total population in Lutz were Jews. The unstable economic development, a huge influx of Russian Jewish refugees, together with an increased support of the Zionist ideas, pushed the growing anti-Semitism to reach a new height. This is the place where the famous Litzman Stadt Ghetto was located between the 1941 to 1945. Thousands of Jews from Central Europe, from West Europe, from other parts of Poland were deported to this place to work more or less free of charge for the German war machineries in hope of survive the most terrible years and people were dying quickly due to starvation, due to farming, due to terrible plagues and most of all Many were deported to the terrible concentration camps in Chelmno outside Turun and Auschwitz outside Krakow in southern Poland. The ghetto was constantly overpopulated as the Germans deported Jews from different Nazi German cities. Their intention of liquidating the entire Jewish population from the world was revealed first after the war. A total of 200,000 Jews passed through the ghetto in five years. Only 800 of them survived when the Soviets arrived. The life in the ghetto was harsh and horrible. The food and the adequate clothing were scarce. The medical supplies were very limited and the sanitation systems were extremely poor. Some of the families committed suicide collectively. Some others sold out their expensive jewellery in order to buy the necessary groceries from the black market. Others joined the resistance movement valiantly when they realised that it was impossible to escape their fatal ends as more and more people deported towards the death camps. Every armed struggle, regardless if it was small or massive, was often ended up with massive exterminations. The rebellions 
were either killed up on the spot or transported quickly to a death camp. In the 40s, the Jewish people were carried away from Luch with such cattle trains. And uh, it is really haunting to just look at the small windows on the train. I would like to know how they really felt when they knew that the only destination that waits for them are either Chelno or Auschwitz concentration camps. When they gaze from the window to the world around them, I can hardly allow myself to scrutinize the devastating feeling they must carry with them all the time. Old people as well as young people, the infants, women and men. What is the meaning of doing this? And how come the people in the 40s were so afraid of something from the outside and the people who carried another face? What should we do to be able to embrace us to all kinds of varieties in the society? And when are we going to start to believe that the differences is somehow the only important combustion engine fuel for the for the development? Transportations between Lutz and Chemnau or Krakow took often days on rail. People were locked inside an overcrowded rail wagon without any supply of food or water. For a child, it was an eternity. The old ones and the infants, who were already frail or sick before they stepped upon the train, died often on the journey. When the deported Jews could finally step out of their dirty and packed containers, most of them were herded to a gas chamber at once. Visiting such a site makes us to question many contemporary norms in our own societies, among others the crazy thought that we, the mortal souls, could dictate the meaning of righteousness and normality. In the secular society, the meaning of piety has lost its form of influence. Nevertheless, the idea of the unity and the sense of consensus are still widely accepted. When we listen to the outrageous speeches which are performed by the nationalists today upon the importance of assimilating oneself, my eyes are filled with tears. This is a famous photo of a children who lived in the Lutz ghetto in the 40s. And um, in the picture, they're showing very different facial expressions. This boy, he sure looks very happy, but most of them look extremely sad and somehow they're very uncertain about how they will feel and the thing is photos like this often encourage me to think my question is if I'm a parent to a child who knows that he is the inferior boy or girl just because he belongs to a very special ethnic group. How do I deal with it while I have to deal with the same problem? And I have absolutely no idea how to be a parent when one's ethnic belonging is the most stigmatized problem. And just look at them. When I look at them today, 
I know most of them were dead in the concentration camps in either Chelno or Auschwitz just a few years or even just a few weeks later. <sighs> they were just boys, they were just young boys whose life, whose lives had just started such a sad time. The collective memories are often coloured with biased ideas. The history of Holocaust is not only about contaminating a certain idea or a manipulating and charismatic leader. It is also a painful examination upon why ordinary people like simple solutions which entails extremely bloody consequences. Is it possible to remain a self-reliant person when the rest of a group agree upon a horrible idea? Do we allow people in our very own vicinity to investigate their own set of truth without trying to correct them with some arbitrary commonsensical nonsense?